So I'm going to compare borrowing with reverse adding. So here is here is the traditional way. You might have seen this in a previous video. 8 minus 7 is 1. 4 minus 9, oops, can't be done. So we get rid of that guy, change him to a 2. We get rid of this guy and change him to 14. So maybe pink marker wouldn't work. So 2 and 14. So we've <coughs> borrowed a set of 10 over here to give over here. So now we have 14 minus 9 is 5. 2 minus 1 is 1, and we have 151. Reverse adding works on the principle that 348 is the answer. 197 needs to be added to something else. To get 348. Well, 7 plus what gives me 8? Well, 1. 9 plus what gives me 4? Well, nothing. And you can't put negative numbers here, so we don't even have to go down that route. 9 plus 5, though, is 14. So what if we had a 5 here, we would do 9 plus 5 is 14, and we would carry the 1. And then we say 1, 2, and we need another 1 to give me 3. Now, as the final step, it looks like it was an addition problem, but you saw it happen in action, whereas this was blank. Now, can you do this straight this way? Well, here's what I do. I say 8 minus 7, or 7 plus what gives me 8? 7 plus 1 gives me 8. This one's not so hard because seven's not bigger than eight. When we go over here and we go four minus nine, you go, uh-oh, not gonna work. Normally we'd have to go and do this crazy borrowing thing that I never understood as a kid. So you do nine plus what gives me four or 14? Nine plus five gives me 14 carried the one over here. What plus one plus this one gives me three? Well, another one. And then you have the same thing. It looks very similar to this guy over here, except this little stray guy. Now you can carry here or wherever you want. You can also carry up here if you need to. No, no, you wouldn't want to do that. So that is what I call reverse adding. I don't know what it's called in schools, but I believe that they're now teaching this.